Dearest Heavenly Father, the great I am, the author and the finisher of our faith, the lily of the valley, the bright morning star, the ever-present water from the rock. Indeed, Lord, without you I can do nothing. And that's the reason I come before you, Lord. I say, Father God, help me to decrease so you may increase as I'm about to start, Lord, this session. Father God, may I be invisible so that you may be visible, O God. I commit every thought, every spirit under your subjection. Take the lead, O God, and I will follow. To the church on YouTube, greetings in the marvelous name, the name above all names, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Well, let me start by welcoming you all to Beulah Land. If you are returning, thank you so much for the loyal support. And if you are new, my name is Beulah. I affirm that I am God's choice. I've been declared righteous, blameless, unreprovable, and brought in the life of peace that transcends all understanding. I am the workmanship of God, created in Christ Jesus unto eternal life. I am from above. And therefore, his word has made me wise unto salvation. His blood has cleansed me from all wrong. I am redeemed. Glory to Jesus. Once again, beloved, it is such an honor and a privilege to get the opportunity to share the word of God with you. Today, I want us to talk about how a broken character can be restored. How do one come back after their character has been fractured? Glory to Jesus. I have, as a result, titled my message, How to Fall Up or How to Restore Broken Character. We all know how to fall down. We've been trained only to succeed, but we've never been trained how to fail effectively. And that's the reason I'm here today to say, how do you come back after you've acted out of character? How do you fall up? What do you do when you lose it all? Well, everybody has embarrassed themselves and others. However, the problem is not failure. The problem is how you deal with failure. For a few minutes, I'm going to be teaching about the secret to leadership failure and restoration. This applies to pastors bishops, evangelists, ministers, corporate executives, husbands, and even parents. How do you come back after you failed your children? The foundation of any leadership is character. Not power, not influence, not competence, no authority. The most important component of leadership is character. The greatest protection of leadership is character. Talents and gifts are only as safe as your character. 
Hallelujah. I remember when I was in grade 7, one of our debate topics went like, it is nature and not nature that determines the character of a child. And I argued that it is indeed nature and not the nurturing. Because even children from the common mother who've shared the same womb, sucked the same breast, can never have the same character. I argued that character is not inborn. Character is a victory, not a gift. Therefore, character is never made without suffering. I said we are speaking about how to fall up or how to restore broken character. Failure in leadership is not as great as failing to deal with the failure effectively. Everybody has experienced a disappointment in themselves. Hallelujah. Dr. Miles Monroe says, Failure in leadership is the closing of an account of trust. He says, every time people prove your character, they make a deposit. Trust is not something you can buy or demand. In fact, trust is what people deposit in your account of integrity, the more they get to know you. And so every time they prove your character, they make a deposit. As the book of 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 21 says, Prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Hallelujah. Trust is end. You must be proved first. And do you know, you can build up an account of trust for 60 years. But if you violate that trust that took you 60 years to build, you can lose it in 60 seconds. And that, my friend, that, beloved, is the tragedy of failure. Trust is the currency of leadership. It's the reason why a leader is successful. People follow you because they trust you, not because you have abilities and capabilities to influence them. No. You know, I once had somebody whose parents are still alive say hi as for me i don't have parents my parents are dead i'm an orphan and i realized the account of trust has been violated it's such a pity you are a safe as the account you protect. Maybe let me ask, what are you doing secretly that could cancel the account? If the currency of leadership is trust, then you can only buy leadership success that the trust people give you. It's impossible to lead people who don't trust you because they will sabotage you. I said trust is the deposit on the leadership account made by followers over a long period of time. You don't stand before people and say, trust me. Either they trust you or they don't. Hello? You are observed for a long time. How do you behave under pressure? 
Are you consistent? Do you have integrity? Are you wise? How do you deal with criticisms and attacks? Only those who survive are trusted. You know, when people applaud me and tell me how resilient I am, how bold I am, how beautiful I am, how they look up to me and how I've made them become who they are today, that is not easy. They are telling me, don't mess up. A lot of people who pursue leadership have no idea what it is and oh, how I pity them. And as a leader, before you do anything, ask yourself this question. Will I enjoy remembering this? Not that we don't get tried and tempted. Oh, honey, we do. But brah, you sure want to look back at you yesterday as your friend. Because yesterday does affect today. The account of a leader is maintained by the leader's continual faithfulness and protection of the trust in secret and in public. And do you know God can fire you and people think you are still hired? Well, you ask Saul, God said to Samuel, I regret that I have made Saul king. For he has stopped following me and has not carried out my commands. That is found in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 11. In other words, Saul was disqualified. He was still going to work, yet fired. And a person who was going to replace him was already anointed to be appointed. I hope there's nobody anointed. I hope there's nobody already anointed to be appointed in your position because God knows some things about you. Say in your heart, I will not violate my account. I will not sell my convictions. There's people looking up to me. They know I am immovable. They know I'm resilient. They know I'm consistent. Please God, don't let me mess up. Unfortunately, today we have so many leaders who mess up and start pretending they didn't. At times, they do good works, avoiding the root of restoration. I'll just ask for forgiveness and move forward. Forgiveness is not restoration. You just can't be forgiven and gain trust. The request for forgiveness is you saying, I need help. Give me room. Give me space to, sit, to seek help. The followers may forgive the leader immediately, but the trust account may be depleted. Don't confuse forgiveness with restoration. I was watching this other soapy, and there's a mama there who gambled with people's um, stock fell money. And so they were angry at her. And then at a later stage, she got a lump sum of money and she went back to them, you know, to just repay her debt. And then she also asked for forgiveness. They forgave her. And then she just wanted to, you know, manipulate the situation and say, yeah, since I paid you, then can I be re reinstated uh, to the stock fell? And they said to her, no way, you know. 
In other words, they are saying the trust account is depleted. And so she was even attempting to speak to the one in authority and they said to her, no, you are disqualified. We will speak on your behalf. Hello? Do you, am I shedding some light here? Guys, my teaching is very long today. But I'm just going to carry on and say, stop blaming people for not trusting you. You are the one who destroyed the account. It takes longer to rebuild it than to destroy it. It takes longer to rebuild it than to build it. And so a leader ought to know that a trust account which may have been built over 30 years could be cancelled in 30 seconds. You know, when I found out that an elderly man whom I cherished and, you know, adored and respected for so many years uh, is now talking ill about me, you know, calling me names at the pulpit, I... I was broken and I acted out of character. I said things that I keep regretting ever saying them. And when people came to me and they told me, no, Bula, but you know that he adores you. He's it's just love talking. You know, even my younger sisters, you know, adding to that. I mean, one of my younger sisters also added to the fact that he just hoped that you you will be coming back and he said, you know, don't, don't say this and that. I, I felt so guilty. And I realized it's simply because the account is depleted. The account that have been built over maybe 15 years is now empty. Have you ever trusted somebody so much that they just turn and disappoint you and say things about you you know it it cancels everything honestly you start being skeptic about a lot of things i don't want to talk too much about it but i also am saying to god Help me to never mess up again. The problem is not unforgiveness. The problem is that forgiveness is not restoration. And as a leader, I just want to say, You don't expect a restoration just because you are remorseful. Go get fixed. Go get help. When your car breaks down, you don't leave it in the freeway, in the highway. You get off the road. You call the mechanics. Because leaving it in the highway can cause accidents. Are you broken? Get out of that CEO position. Get out of the pulpit. Get out of that office. You are blocking a highway of people who are trying to make a difference. You cannot stand at the pulpit and preach the word of God while you are broken. 
That's the reason you are causing accidents. People are now emotionally or spiritually paralyzed by what you say at the pulpit while you are broken. I told you that David resorted to solitude and he started encouraging himself in the Lord because he couldn't do it in a depressed state. In order for you to make decisions, sober decisions, you need to heal first. And that's the reason when you stand at the pulpit, you start talking your own things. Because there is nothing. You are broken. Get off the pulpit. And so, how do you fall up? When you read in the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 12, it says, Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. God's first criteria of leadership is fear. And when you read in the book of Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. God does not care about your personality and your achievements. Do you fear him? When you fall as a leader, number one, Admit you need help. What makes parents over is because they don't admit their wrongs. They are authoritarians. If the person on the ground keeps their hands to themselves, there's nothing you can do. Restoration doesn't begin with the restorer. It begins with you. Hello. Number two. Confess that you indeed have violated your trust. Don't ever justify why you did something wrong. If you attempt, you are not sorry you did. There's no justifications for wrongs. You want to be a leader with integrity. Don't explain. Take responsibility. Don't explain why you sinned. You know what made David come back is because he was repentant. He even wrote his sins in a book. Who could do that? When you read in the book of Psalm 51, David is saying to God, have mercy upon me, O God. My sin is ever before you. Against you and you alone have I sinned. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, some people have reasons why they hurt you. They have reasons why they acted out of character. That's why they will never come back. They just walk back. I hurt her because nobody loves her. She is the problem. Is that the word of God? Are you called to... La to hate people just because nobody likes them. What happened to the scripture that says, These will people know that you are my disciples when you love one another. How do you come back after you've acted out of character? You accept responsibility for all your failures and agree to never attempt to defend yourself. Don't ever stand up after you've fallen and try to explain to people why you've fallen. You are disqualified to speak. You lost your authority. 
So allow those in authority to represent you and speak on your behalf because they still have authority with people. Hello? When Peter messed up, you know, he denied Jesus three times and probably the other guys were excited about it and maybe even thought that they got a chance to become favorites. But look who restored him. The same Jesus he denied. When the final board meeting was called and everybody thought that, hi, Peter ain't coming. They were so sure that he's not going to come. My disciples to meet me and make sure I said Peter. That is Mark 16 verse 7. When the authority calls you, it's over. You are restored. Hallelujah. And that's why, as somebody who is in authority, you need to at all times check whether you are spreading love or hate. People tend to hate somebody who is hated and love somebody who is loved. You know, the reason uh, people uh, calm me down uh, during the, the ordeal is because they knew the elder really adores me. They know. Because every time I would leave the church, and I'd come back, he'd make me stand in the church and applaud me. And so they just said to me, they actually were reminding me of what I seemed to have forgotten. You know, they said, no, it is love that makes him do whatever that he's doing, speak the way he's speaking. You know, your safety under failure is authority hello and so tina we just wanna you know cleanse ourselves we want to come back and say you know i i'm not perfect i'm human uh, that's the reason i did what i had to do you know brah just live you are disqualified When you fall, run for cover, not for explanation, not for explanations. You are disqualified to speak. You know, when Adam and Eve fell in the Garden of Eden, they threw fig leaves and covered themselves. And God came calling, Adam, Adam, where are you? And from that hour, man was disqualified. So God had to send the second Adam to restore man back to his original position. <laughs> Hallelujah. He made a way for man to be restored back to his Godship through Calvary. And that's why I said when I started that, I am redeemed. And that's the reason when you go to God, you cannot go in your own name. You are disqualified. You need the authority to bring you back. When a sheep is lost, it's lost. It needs a shepherd. You cannot bring yourself back. Hallelujah. And when the authority brings you back, the followers' respect for the authority starts restoring the trust account. Because the followers trust the authority, not you. In fact, the followers are saying, well, if you trust him again, 
we will begin to trust him as well. When people no longer trust you, they trust the one you trust. And so the reason we are trusted is because God trusts Jesus. He doesn't even want to know our name because it might remind him of our past life. And so he says to us, keep using my son's name. Hallelujah. And that's the reason when you receive Christ, when you are born again, you are given a new name. And that name is not Beulah. It's not Priscilla. It's not Mabubu. It's not Jokobeth. It's not Mashati. That name is your character in the word. In other words, you do away with your character and you put on the character of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so that's the reason everything is done in his name. Healing is in his name. Even when praying for food, we pray in his name. Hallelujah. In closing, I just want to say that failure is not a termination of a leader's talents, calling, assignments, etc. In other words, failure must be seen as a detour, an interruption, or even an attempt, an attempt to cancel destiny. And so basically, your destiny is not cancelled by failure. Your destiny is cancelled by your inability to deal with failure. May God bless you. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for speaking to us in this manner, Lord. As your word was going forth, my God, we couldn't help but realize we are thirsty. We come to you, Lord, Heavenly Father, and we are saying, O oh God, help us to do away with clothes that camouflage the fact that we are thirsty. Help us to do away with songs and prayers that camouflage the fact that we are thirsty. Help us, my Father, to do away, Lord, with actions that camouflage the fact that we are thirsty. We acknowledge the fact that it is you and you alone who can make us whole. It is you and you alone who can quench the thirst in our heart as we do away with pretense and makeup. Father God, Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, I have this water that if you can drink from, you will never be thirsty again. Give us that water tonight. In the most gracious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.